Central Asia is the core region of the Asian continent and stretches from the Caspian Sea in the west to China in the east and from Afghanistan in the south to Russia in the north. It is also sometimes referred to as Middle Asia, and, colloquially, the Stands, and is within the scope of the wider Eurasian continent. In modern contexts, all definitions of Central Asia include these five republics of the former Soviet Union, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, for a total population of 67.1 million as of 2013 to 2014. Afghanistan is also sometimes included. Various definitions of its exact composition exist, and not one definition is universally accepted. Despite this uncertainty in defining borders, it does have some important overall characteristics. For one, Central Asia has historically been closely tied to its nomadic peoples and the Silk Road. As a result, it has acted as a crossroads for the movement of people, goods, and ideas between Europe, West Asia, South Asia, and East Asia. During pre-Islamic and early Islamic times, Central Asia was a predominantly Iranian region that included the sedentary Eastern Iranian Euro-speaking Bactrians, Sogdians and Khorasmians, and the semi-nomadic Scythians and Alans. The ancient sedentary population played an important role in the history of Central Asia. After expansion by Turkic peoples, Central Asia also became the homeland for many Turkic peoples, including the Kazakhs, Uzbeks, Turkmen, Kyrgyz and Uyghurs. Central Asia is sometimes referred to as Turkestan. Since the earliest of times, Central Asia has been a crossroads between different civilizations. The Silk Route which passed through Central Asia connected Muslim lands with the people of Europe, India, and China. This crossroads position has intensified the conflict between what Andrew Phillips and Paul James call continuing formations of tribalism and traditionalism and intensifying processes of modernization. They argue that, from the mid-19th century, up to the end of the 20th century, most of Central Asia was part of the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union, both being Slavic-majority countries. As of 2011, the five stands are still home to about 7 million Russians and 500,000 Ukrainians. Definitions The idea of Central Asia as a distinct region of the world was introduced in 1843 by the geographer Alexander von Humboldt. The borders of Central Asia are subject to multiple definitions. The most limited definition was the official one of the Soviet Union, which defined Middle Asia as consisting solely of Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. This definition was also often used outside the USSR during this period. However, the Russian culture has two distinct terms. TH Euro TH Micron TH TH one half N N TH 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 N and TH Micron TH one half N on Euro TH degree TH Noeth one half TH degree N TH 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 N. Soon after independence, the leaders of the four former Soviet Central Asian republics met in Tashkent and declared that the definition of Central Asia should include Kazakhstan as well as the original four included by the Soviets. Since then, this has become the most common definition of Central Asia. The UNESCO General History of Central Asia, written just before the collapse of the USSR, defines the region based on climate and uses far larger borders. According to it, Central Asia includes Mongolia, Tibet, northeast Iran, central east Russia south of the Taiga, Afghanistan, northern areas, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Azad Kashmir and Punjab provinces of Pakistan, northern part of India, and the former Central Asian Soviet republics. An alternative method is to define the region based on ethnicity, and in particular, areas populated by Eastern Turkic, Eastern Iranian, or Mongolian peoples. These areas include Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, the Turkic regions of southern Siberia, the Five Republics, and Afghan Turkestan. Afghanistan as a whole the northern and western areas of Pakistan and the Kashmir Valley of India may also be included. The Tibetans and Ladakhi are also included. In so far, most of the mentioned peoples are considered the indigenous peoples of the vast region. There are several places that claim to be the geographic center of Asia, for example Khyzyl, the capital of Tuva in the Russian Federation, 
and a village 200 miles north of Iera 1 quarter MQI, the capital of the Xinjiang region of China. Geography Central Asia is an extremely large region of varied geography, including high passes and mountains, vast deserts, and especially treeless, grassy steppes. The vast steppe areas of Central Asia are considered together with the steppes of Eastern Europe as a homogeneous geographical zone known as the Eurasian Steppe. Much of the land of Central Asia is too dry or too rugged for farming. The Gobi Desert extends from the foot of the Famous, 77 a degree OE, to the Great Kingan Mountains, 116 a degree OE, 118 a degree OE. Central Asia has the following geographic extremes. The world's northernmost desert, at Burugdili in Eels, Mongolia, 50 a degree 18 a euro squared on. The northern hemisphere's southernmost permafrost, at Erdnitzogd Sum, Mongolia, 46 a degree 17 a euro squared on. The world's shortest distance between non frozen desert and permafrost, 770 a km. The Eurasian Pole of Inaccessibility. A majority of the people earn a living by herding livestock. Industrial activity centers in the region's cities. Major rivers of the region include the Mdaraya, the Sidaraya, Irtish, the Hari River and the Murghab River. Major bodies of water include the Aral Sea and Lake Balkash, both of which are part of the huge West Central Asian and Dohlik Basin that also includes the Caspian Sea. Both of these bodies of water have shrunk significantly in recent decades due to diversion of water from rivers that feed them for irrigation and industrial purposes. Water is an extremely valuable resource in arid Central Asia and can lead to rather significant international disputes. Divisions The northern belt is part of the Eurasian steppe. In the northwest, north of the Caspian Sea, Central Asia merges into the Russian steppe. To the northeast, Zungaria and the Tarim Basin may sometimes be included in Central Asia. Just west of Zungaria, Zatizu, or Semirechi, is south of Lake Balkash and north of the Tian Shan Mountains. Khorasm is south of the Aral Sea along the Mdaraya. Southeast of the Aral Sea, Mavaranao is between the Mdaraya and Sidaraya. Transoxiana is the land north of the middle and upper Mdaraya. Bactria included northern Afghanistan and the upper Mdaraya. Sugdiana was north of Bactria and included the trading cities of Bukhara and Samarkand. Khorasan and Margiana approximate northeastern Iran. The Kaisal Qum Desert is northeast of the Mdaraya, and the Karakum Desert southwest of it. Climate Because Central Asia is not buffered by a large body of water, temperature fluctuations are more severe. In most of the places, the climate is moderate. According to the WWF Ekazun system, Central Asia is part of the Palarctic Ecozon. The largest biomes in Central Asia are the temperate grasslands, savannas, and shrublands biome. Central Asia also contains the montane grasslands and shrublands, deserts and xeric shrublands as well as temperate coniferous forests biomes. History The history of Central Asia is defined by the area's climate and geography. The aridness of the region made agriculture difficult and its distance from the sea cut it off from much trade. Thus, few major cities developed in the region. Instead, the area was for millennia dominated by the nomadic horse peoples of the steppe. Relations between the steppe nomads and a settled people in and around Central Asia were long marked by conflict. The nomadic lifestyle was well suited to warfare, and the steppe horse riders became some of the most militarily potent people in the world limited only by their lack of internal unity. Any internal unity that was achieved was most probably due to the influence of the Silk Road, which traveled along Central Asia. Periodically, great leaders or changing conditions would organize several tribes into one force and create an almost unstoppable power. These included the Hun invasion of Europe, the Wuhu attacks on China and most notably the Mongol conquest of much of Eurasia. During pre-Islamic and early Islamic times, southern Central Asia was inhabited predominantly by speakers of Iranian languages. Among the ancient sedentary Iranian peoples, the Sugdians and Khorasmians played an important role, while Iranian peoples such as Scythians and the later on Alans lived a nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle. The well-preserved Tarim mummies with Caucasoid features have been found in the Tarim Basin. 
the main migration of Turkic peoples occurred between the 5th and 10th centuries, when they spread across most of Central Asia. The Tang Chinese were defeated by the Arabs at the Battle of Talas in 751, marking the end of the Tang dynasty's western expansion. During the 13th and 14th centuries, the Mongols conquered and ruled the largest contiguous empire in recorded history. Most of Central Asia fell under the control of the Shagatai Khanate. The dominance of the nomads ended in the 16th century, as firearms allowed settled peoples to gain control of the region. Russia, China, and other powers expanded into the region and had captured the bulk of Central Asia by the end of the 19th century. After the Russian Revolution, the West and Central Asian regions were incorporated into the Soviet Union. The eastern part Central Asia, known as East Turkestan or Xinjiang, was incorporated into the People's Republic of China. Mongolia remained independent but became a Soviet satellite state. Afghanistan remained relatively independent of major influence by the USSR until the Soviet invasion of 1979. The Soviet areas of Central Asia saw much industrialization and construction of infrastructure, but also the suppression of local cultures, hundreds of thousands of deaths from failed collectivization programs, and a lasting legacy of ethnic tensions and environmental problems. Soviet authorities deported millions of people, including entire nationalities, from western areas of the USSR to Central Asia and Siberia. According to Tawaraja Tarbaki and Sanjot Mayendale, from 1959 to 1970, about two million people from various parts of the Soviet Union migrated to Central Asia, of which about one million moved to Kazakhstan. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, five countries gained independence. In nearly all the new states, former Communist Party officials retained power as local strongmen. None of the new republics could be considered functional democracies in the early days of independence, although in recent years Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan and Mongolia have made further progress towards more open societies, unlike Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan, which have maintained many Soviet-style repressive tactics. Culture Religions Islam is the religion most common in the Central Asian republics, Afghanistan, Xinjiang and the peripheral western regions, such as Bashkortostan. Most Central Asian Muslims are Sunni, although there are sizable Shia minorities in Afghanistan and Tajikistan. Vedic Hinduism and Zoroastrianism, a religion with origins in Iran, were major faith in Central Asia prior to the arrival of Islam. Its influence is still felt today in such celebrations as Nowruz, held in all five of the core Central Asian states. Buddhism was a prominent religion in Central Asia prior to the arrival of Islam, and the transmission of Buddhism along the Silk Road eventually brought the religion to China. Amongst the Turkic peoples, Tengrianism was the popular religion before arrival of Islam. Tibetan Buddhism is most common in Tibet, Mongolia, Ladakh and the southern Russian regions of Siberia. The form of Christianity most practiced in the region in previous centuries was Nestorianism, but now the largest denomination is the Russian Orthodox Church, with many members in Kazakhstan. The Bukharan Jews were once a sizable community in Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, but nearly all have emigrated since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. In Siberia, shamanism is practiced, including forms of divination, such as Kumalak. Contact and migration with Han people from China has brought Confucianism, Taoism, Mahayana Buddhism and other Chinese folk beliefs into the region. Arts At the crossroads of Asia, shamanistic practices live alongside Buddhism. Thus, Yama, Lord of Death, was revered in Tibet as a spiritual guardian and judge. Mongolian Buddhism, in particular, was influenced by Tibetan Buddhism. The Qianlong Emperor of China in the 18th century was Tibetan Buddhist and would sometimes travel from Beijing to other cities for personal religious worship. Central Asia also has an indigenous form of improvisational oral poetry that is over 1,000 years old. It is principally practiced in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan by Akans, lyrical improvisationists. They engage in lyrical battles, the Amitish or the Alam Sabak. The tradition arose out of early Bardic oral historians. They are usually accompanied by a stringed instrumental Euro in Kyrgyzstan, 
a three-stringed kimuz, and in Kazakhstan, a similar two-stringed instrument, the domra. Photography in Central Asia began to develop after 1882, when a Russian Mennonite photographer named Wilhelm Peneo moved to the Khanate of Kiva during the Mennonite migration to Central Asia led by Klaas Epe, Jr. Upon his arrival to Khanate of Kiva, Peneo shared his photography skills with a local student Kudoberg and Ivanov, who later became the founder of the Uzbek photography. Some also learned to sing the Manas, Kyrgyzstan's epic poem. During Soviet rule, Aiken performance was co-opted by the authorities and subsequently declined in popularity. With the fall of the Soviet Union, it has enjoyed a resurgence, although Aiken still do use their art to campaign for political candidates. A 2005 Washington Post article proposed a similarity between the improvisational art of Aiken's and modern freestyle rap performed in the West. As a consequence of Russian colonization, European fine arts, painting, sculpture and graphics, have developed in Central Asia. The first years of the Soviet regime saw the appearance of modernism, which took inspiration from the Russian avant-garde movement. Until the 80s Central Asian arts had developed along with general tendencies of Soviet arts. In the 90s, arts of the region underwent some significant changes. Institutionally speaking, some fields of arts were regulated by the birth of the art market. Some stayed as representatives of official views, while many were sponsored by international organizations. The years of 1990 to 2000 were times for the establishment of contemporary arts. In the region, many important international exhibitions are taking place. Central Asian art is represented in European and American museums, and the Central Asian Pavilion at the Venice Biennale has been organized since 2005. Territory and region data nations sometimes included, demographics. By a broad definition including Mongolia and Afghanistan, more than 90 million people live in Central Asia, about 2% of Asia's total population. Of the regions of Asia, only North Asia has fewer people. It has a population density of 9 people per km2, vastly less than the 80.5 people per km2 of the continent as a whole. Languages, Russian, as well as being spoken by around 6 million ethnic Russians and Ukrainians of Central Asia, is the de facto lingua franca throughout the former Soviet Central Asian republics. Mandarin Chinese has an equally dominant presence in Inner Mongolia, Kungai and Xinjiang. The languages of the majority of the inhabitants of the former Soviet Central Asian republics come from the Turkic language group. Turkmen is mainly spoken in Turkmenistan, and as a minority language in Afghanistan, Russia, Iran and Turkey. Kazakh and Kyrgyz are related languages of the Kupkak group of Turkic languages and are spoken throughout Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and as a minority language in Tajikistan, Afghanistan and Xinjiang. Uzbek and Uyghur are spoken in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan and Xinjiang. The Turkic languages may belong to a larger, but controversial, Altaic language family, which includes Mongolian. Mongolian is spoken throughout Mongolia and into Burisha, Kalmyk, Tuva, Inner Mongolia, and Xinjiang. Middle Iranian languages were once spoken throughout Central Asia, such as the once prominent Sugdian, Khwesman, Bactrian and Scythian, which are now extinct and belong to the Eastern Iranian family. The Eastern Iranian Pashto language is still spoken in Afghanistan and northwestern Pakistan. Other minor Eastern Iranian languages such as Shnai, Munji, Ishkashimi, Saraikli, Waki, Yanobai and Ascetic are also spoken at various places in Central Asia. Varieties of Persian are also spoken as a major language in the region, locally known as Dari, Tajik, and Bakri. Takarian, another Indo-European language group, which was once predominant in oases on the northern edge of the Tarim Basin of Xinjiang, is now extinct. Other language groups include the Tibetic languages, spoken by around 6 million people across the Tibetan plateau and into Kungai, Sichuan, Ladakh and Baltistan, and the Nuristani languages of northeastern Afghanistan. Dardic languages, such as Shina, Kashmiri, Pashiri and Kawar, are also spoken in eastern Afghanistan. The Jiljit Baltistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa of Pakistan and the Kashmir state of India. Geostrategy 
Central Asia has long been a strategic location merely because of its proximity to several great powers on the Eurasian landmass. The region itself never held a dominant stationary population nor was able to make use of natural resources. Thus, it has rarely throughout history become the seat of power for an empire or influential state. Central Asia has been divided, redivided, conquered out of existence, and fragmented time and time again. Central Asia has served more as the battleground for outside powers than as a power in its own right. Central Asia have both the advantage and disadvantage of a central location between four historical seats of power. From its central location, it has access to trade routes to and from all the regional powers. On the other hand, it has been continuously vulnerable to attack from all sides throughout its history, resulting in political fragmentation or outright power vacuum, as it is successively dominated. To the north, the steppe allowed for rapid mobility, first for nomadic horseback warriors like the Huns and Mongols, and later for Russian traders, eventually supported by railroads. As the Russian Empire expanded to the east, it would also push down into Central Asia towards the sea, in a search for warm water ports. The Soviet bloc would reinforce dominance from the north and attempt to project power as far south as Afghanistan. To the east, the demographic and cultural weight of Chinese empires continually pushed outward into Central Asia since the Silk Road period of Han Dynasty. However, with the Sino-Soviet split and collapse of Soviet Union, China would project its soft power into Central Asia, most notably in the case of Afghanistan, to counter Russian dominance of the region. To the southeast, the demographic and cultural influence of India was felt in Central Asia, notably in Tibet, the Hindu Kush, and slightly beyond. From its base in India, the British Empire competed with the Russian Empire for influence in the region in the 19th and 20th centuries. To the southwest, Western Asian powers have expanded into the southern areas of Central Asia. Several Persian empires would conquer and reconquer parts of Central Asia. Alexander the Great's Hellenic Empire would extend into Central Asia. Two Islamic empires would exert substantial influence throughout the region. And the modern state of Iran has projected influence throughout the region as well. In the post Euro Cold War era, Central Asia is an ethnic cauldron prone to instability and conflicts, without a sense of national identity, but rather a mess of historical cultural influences, tribal and clan loyalties, and religious fervor. Projecting influence into the area is no longer just Russia, but also Turkey, Iran, China, Pakistan, India and the United States. Russia continues to dominate political decision-making throughout the former SSRs. Although, as other countries move into the area, Russia's influence has begun to wane. The United States, with its military involvement in the region and oil diplomacy, is also significantly involved in the region's politics. The United States and other NATO members are the main contributors to the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan and also exert considerable influence in other Central Asian nations. China has security ties with Central Asian states through the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and conducts energy trade bilaterally. India has geographic proximity to the Central Asian region and, in addition, enjoys considerable influence on Afghanistan. India maintains a military base at Vark, Tajikistan, and also has extensive military relations with Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Turkey also exerts considerable influence in the region on account of its ethnic and linguistic ties with the Turkic peoples of Central Asia and its involvement in the Baku Tbilisi Shihan oil pipeline. Political and economic relations are growing rapidly. Iran, the seat of historical empires that controlled parts of Central Asia, has historical and cultural links to the region and is vying to construct an oil pipeline from the Caspian Sea to the Persian Gulf. Pakistan a nuclear-armed Islamic State, has a history of political relations with neighboring Afghanistan and is termed capable of exercising influence. For some Central Asian nations, the shortest route to the ocean lies through Pakistan. Pakistan seeks natural gas from Central Asia and supports the development of pipelines from its countries. The mountain ranges and areas in northern Pakistan lie on the fringes of Greater Central Asia. 
the Jiljita Euro Baltistan region of Pakistan lies adjacent to Tajikistan, separated only by the narrow Afghan Wakhan Corridor. Being located on the northwest of South Asia, the area forming modern day Pakistan maintained extensive historical and cultural links with the region. Russian historian Lev Gumilev wrote that Kshayongnu, Mongols, and Turkic peoples played a role to stop Chinese aggression to the north. The Turkic Khaganate had special policy against Chinese assimilation policy. War on Terror In the context of the United States' War on Terror, Central Asia has once again become the center of geostrategic calculations. Pakistan's status has been upgraded by the U.S. government to major non-NATO ally because of his central role in serving as a staging point for the invasion of Afghanistan, providing intelligence in al-Qaeda operations in the region, and leading the hunt on Osama bin Laden. Afghanistan, which had served as a haven and source of support for al-Qaeda under the protection of Mullah Omar and the Taliban, was the target of a U.S. invasion in 2001 and ongoing reconstruction and drug eradication efforts. U.S. military bases have also been established in Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, causing both Russia and the People's Republic of China to voice their concern over a permanent U.S. military presence in the region. Western governments have accused Russia, China and the former Soviet republics of justifying the suppression of separatist movements, and the associated ethnics and religion with the war on terror. Major cultural and economic centers, AAAA are cities within the regular definition of Central Asia and Afghanistan, see also Cambridge Central Asia Forum, Central Asian Studies, Central Asian Union, Central Asian Football Federation, Continental Pole of Inaccessibility, Economic Cooperation Organization, Hindutash, University of Central Asia, Central Asians in Ancient Indian Literature. India Euro Unregistered Trademark SA Euro Connect Central Asia Euro Unregistered Trademark Policy Notes References Further reading, blank, Stephen J. Central Asia after 2014. ISBN A978-1-58487-593-2A. Chow, Edward. Central Asia's Pipelines, Field of Dreams and Reality. In Pipeline Politics in Asia, The Intersection of Demand, Energy Markets, and Supply Routes. National Bureau of Asian Research, 2010. Danny, A. H. and B. M. Masson, eds. UNESCO History of Civilizations of Central Asia. Paris, UNESCO, 1992. Gorshanova. Olga V. Svashen D. Revalk heads Hyberora. In Utnaragrafi Chesko Obas Reni. 2008, NAR Degree 1, PPA 71 Euro 82. ISSN 0869 5415, Klein, I. Jesna, U. Cuenza, C. Regional Land Cover Mapping and Change Detection in Central Asia Using MODIS Time Series, in Applied Geography, Volume 35, Issue 1 2, PPA 219 Euro 234. HTTP, DX DOYORG JAPJOG. 2012.06.016, Mandelbaum, Michael, ed. Central Asia and the World, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Turkmenistan. New York, Council on Foreign Relations Press, 1994. Marcinkowski, Emma Smail. Persian Historiography and Geography. Bertold Spuler on major works produced in Iran, the Caucasus, Central Asia, Pakistan and early Ottoman Turkey. Singapore, Pustak and National, 2003. Alcott, Martha Brill. Central Asia's New States, Independence, Foreign Policy, and Regional Security. Washington, D.C. United States Institute of Peace Press, 1996. Phillips, Andrew. James. Paul. National Identity Between Tradition and Reflexive Modernization, The Contradictions of Central Asia. National Identities. Volume 3, pages 23 Euro 35 a, Hassan Bulent Paksoy. Al Pamish, Central Asian Identity Under Russian Rule. Hartford, AACAR, 1989. HTTP, Lebayu Itext Spaksoy 1 Susek. 
Svitaplak. A History of Inner Asia. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 2000. Rawl, Ted. Silk Road to Ruin, Is Central Asia the New Middle East? New York, NBM Publishing, 2006. Stone, L.A. The International Politics of Central Eurasia. Central Eurasian Studies Online, accessible via the webpage of the International Eurasian Institute for Economic and Political Research, http www.yikers.org slash forumin.htm, Weston, David. Teaching About Inner Asia, Bloomington, Indiana, Eric Clearinghouse for Social Studies, 1989. External links, The Library, Central on Politics, Universities, Culture, Languages, etc. Central Asian Gateway Project of UNDP and CER, managed by N. Tlebjanov. Modernity, State and Society in Central Asia, a Research Guide, General Map of Central Asia, is a historic map from 1874.